Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to learn how to implement our own debounce function just like Lodash and other libraries have but in vanilla JavaScript. Now, this is something that someone has asked me to make a video on and that's what I'm doing. If you don't know me, I'm Mohamed Hassan and I'm a Google developers expert in Angular and I'm also a software architect who has been coding for about nine years. If you found this video useful in the end, make sure to hit the like button and without further ado, let's get started. The example we have today is very simple. We have a really simple HTML application which has an HTML file, a JavaScript and a CSS and the JavaScript file only does a couple of things. First of all, it has an event listener bound to the input that we have and whenever we press a key, it basically executes this whole function. Now what this does is that this basically gets the value of the input, logs it, then it shows a loader, then it makes an API call using this get random user function, which essentially does this axios call and brings back the data. And finally, we log the data and we hide the loader. So that's what's happening. If you want to try it out, we can clear the console and try this by typing ahs. And you can see that every time I've typed a character in here, it has sent a call and received the object. So one for a, one for ah, and then ahs. So every time I'm typing, it is getting a result. Now, this is not ideal. Why? Because imagine a user trying to find a product using this input. And while the user is typing and kind of figuring out what to search, we are sending constantly a lot of APIs to the backend, which will cause this user a lot of network data. I mean, it's not going to be significant, but still we can save that. And it's also sending a lot of API calls to our backend, which is not really good and not very efficient. So we can implement a debounce function in vanilla JavaScript that can make this whole process better. So what we are going to do is first, we are going to take this function out and create its own function with variable name. So we can say on input change and then we can say equals and then this whole function. And then here we can basically pass this function So this is called every time. If I try this out after saving, it's going to behave exactly the same. So if I type ahs, you can see that we still get the data no matter what. Now let's create the debounce function. So we are going to create it just like this. We are going to call this debounce and this function is going to create a closure. So first of all, this debounce would accept the function that we want to debounce. For example, this on input change is the function that we want to run after, for example, the user has stopped typing for two seconds or 1.5 seconds. So here first would be the function or the first argument is the function and second is the duration through which we want to do the debounce. So once we have those received, we need to return a function from here. And then this function would essentially do two things. One, it's going to run this function and second, use the duration for it. So for this function, we'd want to do a set timeout. And in this set timeout, we are going to use this function as a parameter. We are going to pass the duration. Now we want to run this function, but we can't directly run the function because we don't have access to the arguments. For example, when I type an input here, it basically causes the web API or the browser API to send us back the event which contains the value. So this input change or this function has to receive this event somehow, otherwise it's not gonna work. So for this, this function that we are returning, this is going to receive the arguments. So this is going to receive the arguments just like this. Notice that we are using the spread operator here. So we get all the arguments. And then here we can do fn.apply or function.apply by passing the context as this and then args as the arguments. Now this will make sure that the arguments or this event is received and then it is passed to the function that we want to debounce, which is this input change. And once we do so, we are all good. Now the only thing that is remaining is that how do we stop calling this function as the user is typing? For example, we say that, hey, this input change is going to take two seconds as the debounce. So the user types a character, then it's waiting for two seconds, but immediately the user also types another character. Now we need to cancel the previous timeout and we create a new timeout in that case. So we need to do that in here. We are going to first create a variable called timer. And here we are going to assign it with null in the beginning. Then when the set timeout is created, we are going to do timer equals set timeout. So we are assigning this the timer. Finally, whenever this function is executed, for example, the user types a, then this function is going to be called, which will call this function. And then this timeout would be registered. But if another key is pressed, then this function will 
execute again and would cause another set timeout and we don't want that so before creating this timeout we are going to check if there is a timer already we need to clear it so here we can say something like if timer exists then we essentially say clear timeout and then we pass the timer inside it then also we say timer equals to null so we need to make sure that this is set to null and we also want to make sure that this is set to null after the set timeout as well now we are ready to use this debounce function all we need to do now is to use it here in the add event listener so i'm going to wrap this on input change with debounce with this debounce method and again it accepts the function name as the first parameter we're not calling the function we're just passing the function name and second the duration so i'm gonna say for example two seconds and now we're good to go i'm gonna save this before trying it out i just noticed that we are assigning const timer this shouldn't be con this should be a let because we are reassigning it every time so i'm gonna save this now and let's try this again now if i type a h s a n you can see that there's nothing happening right now so if i stop typing and wait two seconds now you can see that we got the whole input and we also got the object as well which means that if i even clear this it will wait and then it will execute it based on the query so now we are having a debounce function so yeah that's pretty much it about this video you can see the REPL link in the description so you can play around with it or fork it and if you found this video useful i would highly appreciate a thumbs up and a share that would be super cool as always happy coding i'm gonna see you in the next video